The chain of responsibility pattern is a behavioral design pattern in which a client passes a request through a chain of handlers until that request eventually gets handled somewhere in the chain or until the request reaches the end of the chain and simply doesn't get handled. So there's plenty of practical use cases for this pattern. For example, in web applications, an HTTP request comes through the web server and gets passed through a chain of middlewares. So each of those middlewares could either handle the request or pass it along to the next middleware until the request eventually gets handled. And then this pattern also applies to UI applications. So for example, if I click somewhere on the screen, then that's gonna fire a click event. And that click event is gonna bubble up through a chain of UI elements, which could either handle the click event or pass it up to the parent UI element. So the chain of responsibility pattern, definitely a practical pattern. There's also some clear benefits to the pattern. So for example, the client is completely decoupled from the chain of handlers. So all the client needs is the initial handler in order to pass the request into. And at that point, it doesn't care what happens in that chain of handlers. All it's concerned about is, is my request gonna get handled? So based on that, that also means that we can change our chain of handlers however we wish. We can add new handlers, remove handlers, or even change the order of handlers, and the client isn't gonna be affected. Another benefit of this pattern that I've noticed is that the handlers in the chain are typically small and much more reusable. Whereas if we just had one big handler and not a chain of handlers, then that would be much less reusable and would probably be more difficult to test and maintain as well. So with all this in mind, let's implement the chain of responsibility pattern in our demo so that we can clearly see the benefits of it. So in this demo, we just have a console application where we manage a list of products. So I feel like the best way to demo this is just placing breakpoints and we'll run through it. So here we go. So what I wanna do is create a product. So I'll say create, then the description of the product, these will be shoes and the price will say 120. So here we go, we got our command that we typed in, create shoes 120. Then we split that by the spaces and we have these arguments. So create, and then the second item is shoes and the third item is 120. The first argument is the action. So we wanna create a product. And then we just have the remaining arguments or everything but the first argument, which was the action. And we use these later. So we go through the switch with the action of create. So that causes us to enter this create product handler. And we pass in the remaining arguments with the details of the product we wanna create. So shoes 120. So let's enter this. So we're now in this create product handler. And the first thing we do is check if we're signed in. So in this case, we're not. So we say, you must be signed in to create a product. So let's sign in, another command, we'll say sign in. So as we see our action is sign in, and we enter the switch statement where we sign in through this authentication store. So let's do that, successfully signed in. Let's try creating these shoes again. So run through that. We should get into our create product handler. This time we are signed in and we do some validation on these arguments. So we make sure we have the description and price, which we do. So we extract those, we validate the price is a number. And then since it is, we create the product and we successfully create it. So there we go, created shoes for 120. So now if I wanna list all my products, I can just say list and we enter this switch statement again, our action is list. So we get into this list products handler and here we go. We do the authentication check again. So you have to be signed in to view products, which we are. So we'll just write out all the products to the console. And here we go. We got our shoes for 120. So at this point we are not using the chain of responsibility pattern and we have a few issues here. So for one, this create product handler and this list products handler, they both have to implement this authentication logic. So we have some duplication here. And also both of these handlers have forced themselves to be concerned with authentication. Whereas in reality, you would think the create product handler would just be concerned with creating a product. So in my opinion, this create product handler is doing too much by handling authentication. And who knows, maybe we would wanna disable authentication to create a product or more realistically to list products if we wanted to disable authentication, then we'd have to come into this list products handler and delete it. So this solution isn't very flexible. 
and we have some code duplication between our handlers. So ideally, I would want to leverage the chain of responsibility pattern by having a chain of handlers where the first handler would handle the authentication. And if we're authenticated, then we'll move into the next handler, which might be for creating product or listing products. So that being said, let's create our authentication handler, which will handle this authentication logic. So in our handlers folder, we'll just throw another handler in here. We'll call this the authentication handler and we'll have a handle method on here. So it'll just be a void handle method and it'll take in args. So same kind of interface that these other handlers have. And then in this handle method of the authentication handler, we'll handle the is signed in check. So let's copy all of this into the authentication handler. So if we're not signed in, we'll write out to the console. We'll make this more generic. We'll just say you must be signed in to perform this operation. But then if we are signed in, then we want to forward the request to the next handler in the chain. So we're going to need that next handler. So it'll be something like next handler, which will handle the request and we'll just pass in all of those args. So this next handler is going to be in our case, either the list products handler or the create product handler. So we're going to have to depend on something more abstract. If we want to support both of these handlers, we can't just depend on these concrete types. So in that case, we're going to create some kind of I handler interface that both of our handlers can implement. And then our authentication handler can reference that interface and support really any handler that implements the I handler interface. So let's create that interface called the I handler. And it's just going to have a void handle method that takes in an array of arguments. So same function signature that our handlers already implement. So let's implement the I handler interface on both of these handlers. So list products handler implements it already as well as the create product handler. And while we're at it, the authentication handler can also implement it. So now that we have this interface, that interface is what we'll depend on for this next handler field. So we'll have a field for the next handler. It'll be an I handler. And then we also need the authentication store in here so that we can check if we're signed in or not. So let's get that as a field as well. The authentication store. Let's import that and we'll get both of these passed through the constructor. So now this should be everything that the authentication handler needs to do. Now we just need to use it. So let's move into our other handlers and remove the authentication checks here. So now the authentication check is going to be handled higher up in the chain. So in that case, we don't even need the authentication store passed in to these handlers anymore. And same goes for the list products handler. Let's remove the authentication store and remove the authentication check. So now these handlers are a bit thinner and now we can simply enforce authentication higher up in the chain. So here in our program.cs, we instantiate our create product handler and our list products handler. But before we execute either of these handlers, we want to check authentication first. So we're going to wrap these handlers in the authentication handler. So let's import that and pass in our handler. We also need to pass in the authentication store and same thing for the list products handler. We want to wrap that with the authentication handler and then let's clean up these constructors. So we no longer need the authentication store passed to either of these handlers. So it should be good on instantiating these handlers. The last issue we have is that this create product handler isn't a create product handler anymore. Now it's an authentication handler, but we don't want to just make these authentication handlers. So to make it more flexible, we just want to depend on the I handler interface. So now it doesn't matter if this outer handler is a create product handler or an authentication handler or any handler that we create in the future. All it needs to do is implement the I handler interface, which this already does. So at this point, we should still have authentication enforced, even though our specific handlers aren't enforcing it on their own, we enforce it higher up in the chain. So let's try creating a product shoes for 120. But of course, we must be signed in to perform this operation. 
So this authentication handler seems to be working. Let's put a breakpoint down and try this again. So here we go, hit the authentication handler. We are not signed in and we simply exit early. So let's sign in and try it again. This time we are authenticated. So we pass the request along to the next handler, which in this case is our create product handler and we can create the product. There we go. And let's try listing out the products. So list, whoops, list. We are signed in and we write out all the products. So this handles the first issue where we were duplicating the authentication logic between both of our handlers. So we now have this simple reusable authentication handler that focuses on one thing, which is just authenticating the user. So now that we've implemented this authentication handler, and we're already starting to see the benefits of the chain of responsibility pattern, let's continue and see if we can enhance our chain of handlers. So here in the switch statement, where we read the action that we want to perform, I want to add another action to sign out. So we're going to have another case down here for sign out. And for that, we're just going to call sign out on the authentication store. And we'll say successfully signed out. So we've made this change. It was quite simple, but what I didn't like about what we did is that we had to come into what I would consider the client part of the code, because this is where we really get into interfacing with the user. We had to come in here and directly add this and change this code. So with that in mind, I feel like our client is doing too much. It has to read the action and then determine which handler or which code to execute. Ideally, all the client should do is read the command that we type in and then pass it into our chain of handlers. It shouldn't be so concerned with determining which specific handler to pass into. So that being said, we're gonna have a root handler that'll act as the entry point to our chain of handlers. And all it's gonna do is take in our array of initial arguments. So let's create that handler in our handlers folder. I guess we'll just call this the root handler. That's a decent name. So let's create that. Let's implement our iHandler interface and let's move into our program.cs and move in as much as we can. So all I want the client to do is pass in these arguments to the handler. So we'll grab all of this. So where we extract the action and remaining arguments and go through the switch statement. Let's cut that out and paste that into the root handler. So here we go. And let's make sure we use our args parameter here. And then we're going to need some handlers passed into this root handler. So first we're going to need our list products handler. So let's get that passed in the list products handler, as well as the create product handler. We also need our authentication store passed in. So field for the authentication store. So let's get these passed through the constructor and then let's reference them in our switch statement. So here we go. And then this exit logic is going to be a little bit more complex because we no longer have access to the flag that's outside of our do while. So for now, we'll just comment that out, but we'll come back to implementing this. I want to make sure we have feature parity in the before and after of introducing this pattern. So now in our program.cs, let's create our root handler. So just instantiate that, pass in our list products handler, create product handler and the authentication store. So now we just have to use this handler. So let's pass in the arguments that we get from the command that we type in. So let's pass in those arguments and these will get funneled into our root handler. So let's put a breakpoint here and test this out. So let's sign in. There we go. We hit our root handler and this should work just fine. Let's create a product. So shoes 120 and hit our breakpoint again. Let's remove this and this works just fine again. Let's list products. There we go. And let's exit. And that doesn't work, but we'll come back to that. So now that we have this root handler, now all the client has to do is pass in the initial arguments. So the client no longer has to handle the complexity of mapping the action name to the correct handler. In fact, on that note, we can implement this exit handler without having to change our client code. So let's do that. So the way we we're handling the exit before is we would set this has exited the flag to true, but we can't do that anymore because has exited is outside the scope of this function, of course. So instead we're gonna move this has exited flag 
into an object and we'll be able to pass that object around by reference so that we can access it in our program.cs where we need to read it and in our root handler or any other handler that needs to set it to true. So let's create that. We'll make that a store and we'll just call it the application store. So on the store, we'll have a read only property for has exited. So we'll be able to read it, but we'll only be able to set it from inside the class. And then we'll have an exit method where we'll set has exited to true. So let's initialize the store in our program.cs. This is the application store. So we'll just name it that. And we only want to continue again through this do while loop if the application stores has exited flag is false. So all good there. Now we just need to set this flag to true by calling exit. So we could just do that here, but I think I want to continue to make this handler based. So we're going to create another handler. We'll call this the exit handler, and this should be pretty straightforward to create. So we'll implement the I handler interface, and then we're going to need our application store passed in so we can toggle that exit flag. So let's get that passed through the constructor. And then in our handler, we'll simply call exit on our application store. And we should also write out a console log as well. So we'll grab this one exiting application. So pretty straightforward with this exit handler, simply exiting through our application store, which will toggle that flag. So let's use that now. So we're going to get another handler in here. This will be the exit handler. Let's get that passed through the constructor. There we go. So now we just need to pass it in when we instantiate this root handler. So first off, let's create the exit handler. So instantiate that and pass in our application store and then just pass in the exit handler to the root handler. So there we go, we made that change and we didn't have to change our client code. Well, I guess we did since we're now using this has exited flag on the application store. But that was really just an infrastructure change in reality, the core logic didn't have to change at all. And I was just about to test this out, but I realized we didn't even use our exit handler down here. So let's do that. So if we have an exit action, we want to call the exit handler and handle our command. So let's try this out. We should be able to just type in exit and exit the application. There we go. So at this point, I feel like our chain of handlers is big enough where we can see the benefit of the chain of responsibility pattern and decoupling the client from our chain of handlers, allowing us to alter our chain of handlers without having to impact the client and increasing maintainability by creating small reusable handlers. So there is still much more we could do. For example, I didn't move these authentication actions into their own handlers, but we could totally do that in order to get these onboarded into our flexible handler interface. We could also create help handlers. So instead of just writing invalid command, we could have some kind of help handler that would print out all of the available commands and how to use those. We could even have more specific help commands. So for example, for the create product handler, if our arguments are invalid, we could write out a help command specifically for how to create a product. And then depending on how far you want to take your chain of handlers, you could even extract all of this create product validation logic into its own handler, which gets executed higher up in the chain before the create product handler. So that would really thin out this create product handler. But again, it really depends on how much you want to break down your handlers and how much flexibility you really need. But aside from that, hopefully you can leverage the chain of responsibility pattern in your own application in order to leverage its benefits. Finally, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.